All right, hey everybody. Uh, today we're going to be discussing med kits, med kits on a budget. What you can do to make sure that you have proper medical equipment with you in case of emergency, but based on a budget. Um, I realize that everybody doesn't have uh, the money to go out and buy a lot of these kits. A lot of the med kits out there, whether it be uh, first aid kits or uh, trauma kits or med kits, uh, EDC kits and whatnot, that you can carry, they can get expensive. And I also think that each kit will uh, vary from person to person what you need because even if you go out and buy uh, some of these special kits that they have out there, you may need to add stuff to it based on your uh, personal medical needs, whether again you're diabetic, whether you have heart issues, whether you have severe allergies, do you need to carry an EpiPen with you, do you need to carry Benadryl with you, do you need to carry your heart medicine with you, do you need to carry um, uh, some sugar with you or some type of uh, diabetic, your, your insulin and whatnot with you. So I think it can, it can vary in what you have and also can vary again on um, what you're doing, what activities are you doing? Um, are you just driving down the road day to day in your work? I mean, uh, for instance, my, my backpack kit that I have for when I'm out hunting uh, isn't quite as extensive as the kit that I carry every day with me on or you know uh, long range trips. Or if I know I'm going out in the woods and whatnot like that when I'm hunting or when I'm hiking, you don't want all that weight with you, so you take what you need to do for the major issues like major bleeding, stop the bleeding, and, and, and whatnot like that. So I think what we're going to do today is just show you what I've put together based on my experience riding the bus or the ambulance and what I think, um, you know, what I've had to use out in the woods. Uh, while out hunting and hiking and so on and accidents I've come across uh, as a regular citizen when I've witnessed accidents and what I've had to use out of my kit uh, for those so but also on a budget now some of these things if you're an EMT or some type of um, a medic or something you're not going to use some of these budget things because you know they don't work as well to be honest with you when you're doing it every day or, or needing it in those uh, condition so you're going to buy the little more expensive things but we'll go into that a little bit later okay so let's go ahead and see what we got first um, some of the stuff you may need you may not need like I said again it's going to be based on uh, for one your experience if you have any your training if you have any and what medical conditions you have if any or family members or kids or anything you have um, and not only that but what activity you're doing so that said, uh, first we've got here, we've got the CPR mask. Um, again, depending on your training in CPR, you may know how to use one of these, you may not. Uh, you may um, find that this isn't necessary and today with the different training that we have where we just do uh, chest compressions only, you may decide that that's not worth carrying uh, with you. So again, that's gonna be your determination. One thing that I do have t here, is a cat tourniquet and I'm not going to go into detail and training on how to use this stuff but this is a cat tourniquet and in my opinion you can do makeshift cheaper budget um, tourniquets and whatnot but personally and professionally with my experience these these um, commercial grade ones are just, I mean, they're 19 bucks. You can get, I got this on Amazon for like 18, 15, 18 bucks, something like that. So I think that was worth it. And that's pretty well within the budget that I was trying to keep everything at. So I do recommend that you get one of these um, from the store or somewhere else. All right, so another thing that we have too is trauma shears. Now, these trauma shears I got at uh, Walmart for like three bucks. Um, again, this is one thing that I was talking about. I wouldn't necessarily recommend these for, say like when I was riding the bus every day on the ambulance. I mean, there are better quality ones out there, but for certain circumstances for your hunting pack, 
or if you do a lot of hiking and whatnot like these these will do fine for you know uh for a few cases for a few patients i mean i've used them before and they work great but there are better ones out there that will function and say like a uh, mass casualty um incident so i just kind of wanted to throw that out there another thing too we'll go to through is um we are going to look at uh the siloox so this is the <clears throat> hemostatic uh, graduals. So this is for stopping major bleeding and whatnot. Um, I've used this stuff before. Uh, just coagulates the blood and helps stop it stop it from getting worse if used right. I think everybody um, should have some of this, whether you, again, not that everybody's gonna get in a gunfight or get in a situation where, um, you know, they're gonna be stopping a bunch of gunshot wounds, but you never know, you could come across a um, a major car pile up on the highway and you may find that someone's bleeding badly from a, some type of a puncture wound and whatnot and it needs to get stopped and this is a great way to do this. And there are other uh, other products out there that do that as well um, based on your training and experience. And here I've just got some regular band-aids. These band-aids, just you know, regular band-aids for minor cuts and bruises to help keep keep it from getting uh, infection or keep it clean. Um, I've got a, I'm not gonna take them all out, but I've got a huge stack of three by threes in here, which I love this three by threes. Um, I also have a stack of the four by fours. These things are great as well. And another thing you guys can think about using for absorbing the blood um, or stopping the bleeding and whatnot, and you get a bad scrape and you're kind of the mud and the yuck and the gunk might not hurt to throw some of that on it, cover up the wound, and go back and then clean it out a little bit better. I do have some non-aspirin in here, in this little bag that I've got. Um, but I also got some uh, Equate brand uh, Benadryl, but it is Benadryl. And it was a third of the cost. And the same exact ingredients as the Benadryl brand, and you know this is always good to have for allergies and for those people that you know if you're allergic to bees or allergic to anything you got to deploy your EpiPen and you can't get to uh, help right away it's great to have some of that on you and again this isn't a huge extensive uh, kit by any means but this is some of the basic stuff that you can use in case of um, an emergency it's just a budget kit something that, that you have, I mean, some of the essential stuff. And another thing that I have that I like to carry on me is a pen light. I love this pen light. And of course, uh, those of you that are in the medical field uh, like these two and know them, but know what they, you know, for your pupils and whatnot, but you can also use it for um, uh, any type of a light source. And on that note, another thing that I picked up at the store that I threw in my pocket here that I keep in mind is this little light it's a hat light this clips onto your hat and what I do is you clip it on and you can hands free so if for some reason you are out in the field or something happens and you need both your hands and you also need to talk and whatnot instead of holding the light in your mouth or anything else this little deal right here was a dollar at Walmart and works fabulous I've used it on camping trips hunting trips and I've bought about a dozen of these things. And the cool thing about this is it does take batteries. So you can swap it out. And this whole thing was a buck at Walmart. So uh, again, based on our budget theme, this is kind of what I have put together. Some of my other packs I have, and I didn't bring them with me, I want to get back to the shears, is I have better shears that are a little bit bulkier and whatnot, but again, you know, these things were three dollars where the shears that I bought and have used on the bus were triple that, if not a little bit more, depending on what, what I was getting, what size, what length, and whatnot, and brand that I was, was using at the time. So. Okay, you guys, uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope that you understand that we did put this together, I put this together based on a budget and some of the necessities which in my mind is getting blood stopped, 
and trying to make sure that um, the patient or yourself uh, maintains uh, proper blood pressure and whatnot for the average citizen. I mean, there are things that, that you can do with training to help, but these are the basic things that an average citizen can do, an average person can do, and the main thing is get that bleeding stop, get it maintained if you can, uh, maintain an open airway for the patient if possible, and a lot of that's going to going to come down to your training. I mean, you, you've got to get out and get some training. CPR classes aren't that much. There are numerous companies that do um, like a battlefield type um, first aid training. And just your basic first aid, especially in an urban setting, can save lots and lots of lives and, and also aid the paramedics and the EMTs once they get there and they can get their job done. I mean, if you can maintain the, the blood and bleeding, then, you know, it, it goes a long, long way. And CPR, I think everybody should go in and get trained on CPR. Again, we will do more med kits. Uh, we'll do trauma-based kits um, and whatnot. And one thing I did want to add that I just thought of that I forgot is like an occlusive bandage. I don't have a commercial um, store-bought occlusive bandages in here. And I did that um, because you can use anything like a Ziploc bag and the tape the tape up your corners or your three edges or however you want to do it for an occlusive bandage for a uh, penetrating wound uh, to the torso and everywhere uh, on the torso area. So if you have a, a gunshot wound or stabbing wound, but any type of a sucking wound, you could use a Ziploc bag, cut it out, and use this plastic heavy mill bag. Um, and then you could either tape it on all three edges and leave one side open for a vent or on the corners and leave multiple areas for venting. Um, but these bags, that's one reason why I have these bags in there, is to uh, be able to use that based again on a budget. Um, I do like the commercial grade ones or the, uh, the commercial ones. They do work well. I've used them before. They're fantastic. But again, if you're building up multiple med kits or trauma kits, um, it can get expensive. So you've got to kind of base on what it's worth to you on, depending on what uh, equipment that you have. Uh, you spend a little bit more money, get a little better uh, equipment and gear, and, or you can do stuff based on, a, on your budget. You may not have a lot of stuff. And you may have to put this stuff together just a little out of time. So I want everybody to stay safe. Remember, take your kids out shooting. Also, get them some first aid training and get yourself some first aid training. See you next time.